in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, you smelly, smelly people? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Genius Brain, you stinky bastards. Oh, yeah. Take a shower. Take a shower. <laughs> dude, we just did a jujitsu the other day, and I am fucking wrecked. I'm wrecked. I actually uh, hurt my groin. How? I don't know if I if I did it from jujitsu alone. I think it's just from when people put their their feet on your hips. Sometimes it slips down and hits your oh, groin yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I couldn't walk yesterday. Did bar kick your balls? I don't fucking know. I think everybody beat me up yesterday. You beat the shit out of me, dude. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> wiggly Japanese I, man. I haven't I haven't really grappled like that in eighteen years. You know what's crazy about that it's shit? Crazy. It's like you don't. You don't realize how much you don't know what to do when somebody grabs you until somebody grabs you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, shit. I don't know what to do. Yeah, that's like, true. You know, just when we were younger, like if, if somebody took you to the ground, you start swinging as much as possible. Yeah. But when somebody knows how to like really control you on the floor, I'm like, I don't I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get to the floor because I don't want to get dirty. And I don't like <laughs> I don't like grappling on concrete. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks. It's, and you know what's hard? Um, Grappling on the beach. Oh yeah, yeah. This <laughs> we did that for my birthday when I was like nineteen or eighteen. What are you doing grappling on the beach? We just had a big birthday th- thing on the beach, just a powwow. Yeah, and then everyone started grappling on the beach, and then it was fun. But like, first of all, like I don't know. I I guess uh, it was it was a bunch of guys in like really tiny shorts grappling on the beach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then there was sand just being thrown everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. It, it gets in your eyes. It gets in like, it's it's pretty rough. That's like beach sex, dude. Yeah. And in skin <laughs> on skin, when you get sand in between, that shit, that shit's not, not, not good, man. But that's all like the Brazilian used to do it. On the sand? Mm-hmm. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's how they develop their moves and shit. And- dude, we had, um, I remember in high school. Um, did you did your friends used to just box out of nowhere? Just put on gloves and yeah. just start boxing each other? Yeah. <laughs> but they looked stupid though, because they didn't know how to box. We just swung and yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a so one of my friends, her her older brother, and then I had this friend in high school named Gabriel, this dude uh <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> this fool <laughs> a box this dude <laughs> in, at this place called Norman Water Park. And it was so fucking funny because he got bum rushed. So they just started swinging at each other. And this fool bum rushed him so fast. This fool flipped over this like this concrete slab. And he just did, like this tumble Oh, over. shit. It was so funny, too. It's weird when we were younger. We used to think that we knew how to fight. Yeah. And so then we would just put on gloves and start swinging at yeah. each other. But I just remember everybody would just start just putting on gloves and throwing. Yeah, it's they do this. They they swing like that. I actually I actually knocked out one of my friends like that. Yeah, and it was because so, you're not supposed to go 100, percent but kids do. Yeah, and yeah. we don't even know what not going 100 percent is. Yeah, and then we don't think about like brain damage. We don't nope. think about getting rocked. <laughs> nope. And so this guy, I mean, mind you, this dude is he's like smaller than me. He's like smaller than you. Compared, oh, really? Like, size difference wise, right? But picture you, but then like a hundred and like twenty pounds, and I'm, oh, like, and I'm like, that's like me in high school. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm like two hundred pounds, right? Yeah. And even if we both don't know how to fight, yeah. If just, you land a hit, though, I'm going down. Exactly. Yeah. So this dude, like, you know, he just started swinging on me super hard. I'm like, yo, dude, we're just like some friendly shit. I was like, all right. I just did. I fucking just swung like a blind swing, and I cracked him on the face. Oh, and I remember because his fucking head looked like it turned around to the back. Oh, Went, blah. And he just like knocked out on the floor. Damn, you made him a fucking turbine engine. I felt so, you know, it, it sounds a lot cooler than it is, but I'm pretty sure if we record it, it's just me closing my eyes and just like, <laughs> and he caught a lucky one. I it's a, a world star fight video. Yeah, it's one of those really, dude, I watched that shit. There's a, there's a, a, a Twitter handle that has just all hood fights. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking crazy, man. I like how they, uh, their, their head is all the way back. Like oh, the, yeah. their fighting stance, it's like all the way back, and then they they <laughs> swing. Their, like the, chin is up. Yeah. Did you see that one where the dude? Um, <laughs> these two dudes fighting like in the middle of the street, and there's just like one black dude just chilling on the corner. And the guys for some reason somehow switched one black dude yes. to another. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was like in New York, right? Yeah. And well, because it was like a white guy. Yeah. And then he was chasing after the black guy, and then they were fighting. Yeah. And then the that one black guy, uh, he ran behind the other black guy, and then when the white guy thought the black guy was him, then yeah. he punched that guy. I was like, what the fuck, dude? This like literally thinking that all black people look alike, and he just swung at any black. He didn't even know he was fighting two different people. Wow. It was so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> I know that was pretty funny. When was the last time you got into a fist fight? Shit, it's been a long time, huh? 
Yeah, I I do know that Bart was there. Bart got into the fight. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean that fight together. Stadium. It was in Little Tokyo, but I had to be twenty two. So what's that like? Twelve years ago? Fuck. Yeah. Like I mean, we've a real street fight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not not like a like because we we spar all the time. Yeah. But yeah, like a. Um, a street fight. Yeah. It was 12 years ago. Jesus, dude. Yeah. I mean, I had a lot of close calls, but it was always self-defense. Like yeah. there was this one crackhead that was like yelling at everybody at the park. Remember that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. They were yeah. yelling at my dog and, yeah. and then like trying to fight. And then he started um, almost attacking that lady with the with the baby cart. And then that's when I had to like kind of run in and, and, and try to distract his attention that shit was like, holy fuck, this guy might attack me. But I'm always afraid to fight crackheads or people that are high because um, they have superhuman strength. They just don't care. They don't. You could smack them a million times. They might not feel it. I'm scared and, of crazy. That's yeah. What I'm, I'm scared of crazy. You could kick them in the balls and they might not do anything like a Buddhist monk, you know? <laughs> The fucking, when they hold the two bricks. Yeah. The fucking kicks to the balls. No, like I think, um, yeah, the last, it was so memorable because it was like a revenge thing, right? These yeah. guys bashed up my car because. Um, oh, but, shit. Yeah, man. Um, one of these guys, his his girlfriend at the time, um, um, I did her favor. Something happened. I, I forgot what it was. I think I, I helped her out through a problem. And then as a nice gesture, she made uh, cookies for me the next the next day oh, and nice. he saw okay. that and he got fucking jealous right so he went on um aim one night and then he was like hey like uh i'm stranded he he had the password to her account so he was like hey i'm stranded um i need help oh he set you up yeah so i was like okay where are you at and i'm like fuck well i guess i could take my mom's car and help pick you up and then drop you off right and then um, I was like, well, I was friends with her older brother, too. I was like, where's your older brother at? Why can't he do it? And yeah. then she's like, oh, well, he's not in town right now. And it, But this is like, this party's weird. Like, I, I don't know how I got myself in here. And I was like, All you, right, you know what's so funny in that situation? As he's typing this out and you're writing to this this girl, right? Different ways for you not to do it. You wouldn't think that he would think, oh, maybe he's not trying to fuck my girl. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, how fucking dumb is this guy? Yeah, so I was like, all right, fuck it. You know, I'll go, yeah. I'll, I'll come pick you up. And then so like um, I pulled up to the driveway and then I turned off my car like an idiot. Yeah. There's no music. There's no sound. So I'm like, I didn't get out of the car. Yeah. And then so um, I think I think I texted her or something at the time. But while I was waiting in the car, a bunch of dudes with masks rolled up. They bashed my windows oh, and then shit. all this shit. I was trying to turn the car on. And then like, um, I don't know, like, I, I guess the car wouldn't turn on because maybe I wasn't. Oh, what a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Cause I was panicked. So I wasn't, so I just kept going dun, 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 like, right. And I wanted to run these guys over or something. I just wanted to drive off. And when they broke through the windows, um, they stuck their hands in with pepper spray and they maced me. Oh yeah, shit. and then and then so they just kept cracking the car, and then they all like scattered like ants. So nobody pulled me out of the car, or damaged me. They just pretty much like assaulted my car. Yeah, and then so I was like covered in pepper spray. I didn't know at the time, but I was going home, and I just I just fucking ran all the red lights and. And like, oh, before that, I try to uh, chase them down and they hop some fences and I try to get to where their car was because I was just going to crash my car into theirs <laughs> <laughs> to stop them and shit. Yeah. Yeah. But then they just bounced off. So I drove away and then um, basically I got home. My mom was like, what the fuck happened? And my mom had to uh, drive to the to the uh, what do you call it? The. um like our 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 auto manufacturer like our uh, what do you call it mechanic mechanic yeah yeah which by the way is a, a legendary drifter oh really yeah he's a legend fuck it he's a and his son is my friend too uh kangushi oh yeah. shit what yeah. the fuck That's and so they random. were dude they were shocked they were like what happened and i'm like man some gangsters just bashed my car you know yeah and anyways so so, uh, yeah, my mom had to go through that. And that's when I recognized, I thought I had glass in my eyes and I was at home and I was like trying to wash out the pepper spray. But it's crazy, like during adrenaline, 
the pepper spray doesn't really fuck with you. Oh, like sure. it, it just makes you cry a lot and you're blinking a lot. But I feel like pepper spray might not be the strongest thing to do. Yeah. Like when you want to get away from people. Yeah. But anyways, so that that happened. And then I started investigating who it was. I had a hunch it was her ex. But who were the other guys? Yeah. And then so her ex was or, or I guess. What she told me was they were going through a rough time. They weren't they weren't actually a couple anymore or something, but he still had her password and she totally forgot about that. Oh shit. Yeah. So he um he was military, so I guess he conveniently planned this so he goes off to his like base or whatever. Yeah. So he left for that. And then um so I was like, well, if I can't get him, I'm going to get all of his friends. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I started figuring out one by one who they were. And like, there's been some times when I, I fucked a lot of them up. One of the guys actually that I found out, I, I stalked him at a barber shop and I started getting haircuts from him oh. <laughs> just to fuck with his head. Yeah. And then I would have him, I would ask for him specifically to cut my hair. Oh, shit. And then I would have him cut my hair and I'd have conversations with him as if I didn't know anything. Yeah. And then um, one day he said, hey, Joe, I was like, well, I just want you to know that I'm sorry for what happened, but I wasn't there that night. Oh, shit. So he was, I think he felt weird about it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I was like, "Um, do you know who was? And he goes, yeah, I don't hang out with those guys anymore. But he told me the names. And I was like, okay, cool. Cause he was really close to those guys. Yeah. So I was really close to just like basically fucking with them for a little bit. And yeah. then one day, like you're maybe a, during his lunch shit, fuck his ass. Fucking psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> That's so scary. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was another time when um one of his other buddies were boldly laughing at me. So me and my buddy Oh shit. That makes you mad. Yeah, we were we were so uh we were so we were at a corner at a stoplight by uh by In and Out, and then um he pulled up next to me. This this fucker is like a spoiled rich kid. He had a BMW in um high school, and he all, he was always like a wannabe gangster, right? So I drove up, and then he pulled up next to me, and he started laughing and smiling, and I was like, "Oh There's shit!" There's no fucking way he wasn't a part of him. Yeah. Little did he know, next to me was one of my most hot-headed, violent friends. <laughs> and as soon as I looked at him and he started laughing at me, I was, and I said, that's him, my friend immediately opened a door and then he oh, opened shit. his door and he started kicking him in there. And that guy's girlfriend was like, stop, stop. Oh, shit. Right? So I put my car on the e-brake. I fucking did one of those Tony Jaw slide over the <laughs> slide over the fucking hood things. Well, it probably looked like a more roll. <laughs> and then we started beating his ass like in the middle of the street because he probably didn't expect us of to course. do that. Of course. That's why yeah. he was laughing. Yeah. And then... um. That was one that was one incident, right? So one by one, we were starting to knock out these guys. And then the the thing was I never got the X. He just disappeared at the face of the this earth. Yeah. Um, and then one day, so me and my bar were me, me, uh, me, Bard, and a couple of our, our buddies, like they know this story. A lot of people knew what happened to me. Yeah. Right. And then cause I was like struck with revenge. Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was like, this was this happened right around high school, 17, 18. So I probably held this anger up until my early 20s. Yeah. And by that time, like um, me and Bart, we were all a part of a fight club. Like we went, we that's when we first met. Like we did MMA. Yeah. And then um, funny story, those guys, they love fighting, but they're also very honorable people and they never joined a gang or anything like that. They're yeah. military guys, but yeah. they're very violent guys, right? So those guys, as in Bart and his friends, so they created this crew called the Peacekeepers. <laughs> Dude, that sounds like some shit Bart would do. It's They're like- so stupid. So they, <laughs> side story, they would go to frat parties and then like they would be the unofficial security. And if if any fight broke out, they would fuck up both of, gu- both of the guys that were fighting. <laughs> they just wanted to fight. They wanted an excuse to fight, but not feel guilty about it. They were so stupid, dude. They would like, 
<laughs> yeah, they they were like, oh, we're we're fighting for justice. So like they'll fight like guy, they'll fight, they'll they'll run into fight, they'll go to p- house parties with yeah. gangs, and then like yeah. they'll start fights with them. But they're like, we're not a gang though. We're trying to set the record straight. And I'm like, you guys are fucking stupid, dude. <laughs> But I believe them though. I used to think you guys are so cool, man. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's a different way to look at it. I mean, you're 18, 19, you're yeah. fucking dumb, right? <laughs> that's fucking tight, dude. Yeah. They're like, yo, we're not a gang. We're just looking for other people to fight so we can fuck everybody up. Yep. It's like, are you talking your gang, dude? <laughs> They're fighting for justice. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, so stupid. That's fucking funny, dude. I know. They're like, we're not a gang. We're a fucking security group. You know? Like, <laughs> it's like nobody asked you to be I security know. here, bro. <laughs> stupid. That's fucking tight. You know why? I mean, that's one of the reasons why Bart got so buff is there was uh, they got into a fight at a club. Their, I guess it was their peacekeeper crew or whatever, but there was this big ass white boy, yeah. like huge, right? And, um, you know, a, a couple of scrawny ass Asian guys, like they were landing hits, yeah. but nothing was affecting this dude. Yeah, oh, nothing. Shit. And then like, you know, I think that really like bruised his ego or like bruised his like confidence. And, and he was like, fuck, dude, like I really got to get strong because like he's like, I could land these hits. But if the other guy's stronger, there's no way. Yeah. 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 And then so he started working out. But yeah, like so. I already had this group, right? Like I wasn't a part of this group. I just like at that age, like I didn't have my gang with me. I left that life. I started going to college. Um, Actually, you know, some of the guys in Bart's group were, were very helpful in that. Yeah. Like, like they were never, they, you know, they, they got out of boot camp. They're military guys. They were like kind of showing me that there is a better way to like live like amongst the world, you know? Yeah. So I was like, oh, these guys are dope. Like they're, you know, they're down for their shit, but they don't have to be a part of anything. And then they want to elevate themselves, go to college and shit like that. So I really like the guys. And then so, but they were down for me. Like they would fight for me, all that stuff. So they were like, hey, if any time we see these guys, man, we got your back or whatever. Um, and then all the other previous rivalries that I had, like if I had beef because it was gang related, I didn't care anymore. Because yeah. to me, it was like, sure, like, um, you know, they might have shot so and so or whatever, like, but I thought that that was like not a legitimate reason. And I never had hate. Yeah. I never cared. To me, it was like, okay, it was a gang rivalry and it started over stupid shit. A lot of the times it's it started because somebody in my group was a dumb hothead and he just wanted to start stuff. Yeah. And we got caught up in it. But I, I never cared. So I was like, whatever, if I see a guy that was supposed to be a rival or whatever, like, I'll just be like, fuck it if they want to, but I'm not going to start anything. And I don't have any hate toward that. Yeah. These guys, I took it personal. Well, because, it, was, it was personal as fuck. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, I don't know. I just couldn't let it go. And then, so, um, we were at this bar and then, um, one of the buddies was like, Hey, he's in the bathroom. Oh shit. And he was like, what do you want to do? And then, um, I looked at him like, I was like, fuck dude let me let me have some time with him just me and him in the bathroom like you guys go to the door like hold it hold it down for me yeah right so uh i go in this guy's washing his hands the guy that laughed at me Mm -hmm. at on the street right he's actually like um like a little bit taller and and just i don't know but i i knew i could fuck his ass up yeah so i went in and then um 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 i think bart was at the door and another buddy of mine went into the stall or something like that. Um, no, no, no. Actually, it was just me. And then, okay, so it was me first and then Bart and another guy at the door. And then when I went in there, I didn't know that that guy's buddy was taking a piss like in the uh, in the, in the the toilet side. Yeah. So he was washing his hands. And I came in and I was like, remember me, motherfucker? And then um, he looked up. And then as soon as he looked up, he kind of like threw his hands up. So when he did his like little gangster throwing hands up yeah. thing like that, I fucking 300 kicked him in the stomach. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then and then we just started like yeah. going at it, right? Like just throwing fists. And then I feel this boom from the back of my head. So I guess one of his buddies oh, came shit. behind me and they oh, hit me. Oh, he was me. in the bathroom too. Yeah. So I went down and then as I was getting up, both of them were on me, kicking me, punching me. So like I was, it somehow turned around where I was by the like paper, paper towel dispenser. Yeah. And then like I'm covering up and then like there's all this commotion. And that's when 
Barton and my other buddy open the door. They come around. They pull the guys off of me, and they started launching, right? Yeah. And here's the thing. The guy that was really bold and acting tough, when the tables turned around, he started screaming for help. He oh, my like, God. Help. After he jumped help. you with two guys? Yeah. yeah, dude. So he was like, help, right? <laughs> and then um, my other buddy was outside coming in, uh-huh. and then- he was like, oh, you need help? And then he says, yeah, there's guys. And he just started wailing in his fucking face. <laughs> oh, shit. Because he was like, oh, you need help? And then he grabbed him by the back and he just went, bow, 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 bow. Peacekeepers, yeah, yeah. homie, peacekeepers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so, yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is my other friend was kind of buzzing during the time. And he yeah. kicked me in the fucking face thinking that I was one of them. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then <laughs> She's like, you stupid so, son of a bitch. So what, right when he kicked me, the guys got away. Yeah. And then everybody got away and it, it happened so fast. And then I got up and my, um, I knew I fucking got him in the face pretty hard because my, uh, my ring finger on my right hand was like, um, oh, it up. was dislocated. Yeah. That's the first time, um, I, I punched someone so hard that it dis- dislocated. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck, I got him. I must've got him good. Right. Yeah. But I didn't knock nobody out. So I was like, fuck. So then at this point we're like, oh shit. Let's go catch him in the parking lot. So we all ran. And then this is when like the security guards were like, hey, like all this commotion was happening. And then it was like a movie where we just went through the kitchen. And then it's like we ran through the kitchen. And while I'm running, I'm like up here, like putting it back into place. Cause I, I it was like this, my, yeah. my finger was like this and I'm like, oh fuck. And I put it back into place and I ran out. And then all of us got into the parking lot. When we got there, these guys love bashing cars, man. Fucking cowards. They had all their weapons out. They had all their weapons out and they're walking toward, uh, they knew which one of our cars were and they were walking toward that. And I was like, you guys going to fucking bash our cars like a little bitch? We're all right here. Let's go. And then they had weapons. Yeah. They didn't want to attack us with their little weapons. And then these Samoan security guards came out and then they're just watching the whole thing and they're like, hey, we're going to call the cops, right? Yeah. So I was like, all right, how about this? Me and this guy just go one-on-one and then it doesn't involve anybody. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then the guy just kept talking and yelling and being a big guy. And I was like, let's do it, man. I was like, stop talking. That's so fucking annoying. You know those guys? Like yeah. when 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 there's a security guard, they start taking they off get, their shirt. They get louder and louder and yeah, louder. Yeah, and then and then their friends were playing the game with them, like pulling them back, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's right? like nobody's holding you back. You could come yeah. right now. And then, <laughs> and then he's like, Can I talk to you, man? Can I talk to you? And I was like, Can I talk to you? Yeah. And I was like, What's what kind of trick is this fucker gonna pull? Am I gonna walk up to yeah. him and he's gonna sucker punch me? Yeah. So I went up to him and I was like, What's up? And he's like, I wasn't there that night. And I'm like, Yeah, right. I was like, why the fuck did you laugh at me? And yeah. he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, I didn't laugh at you. And I'm like, yeah, you laughed at me on the street when I beat your ass on the street. And he's all like, I wasn't laughing. I was, no, nah, um, I was I was saying what's up. I was smiling. You were saying what's up? Oh, dude, that's going to make me even more mad, dude. He was lying. Yeah. And then and I was like, so who did it then? I was like, you weren't there? And he goes, no, I wasn't there that day. I wasn't. I was like, were any of these guys there? And then he's like, um... Yeah, but no, nah, like, I, but I was, I'm, I'm done though. Like, you already got me two times. He's like, isn't that fair? <laughs> Talk. This is so funny. It's like he's fucking scared. He's like, yo, yo, even, even Stevens. Like, he's he wanted so- to make a. He wanted. He had his pride, right? But he yeah. wanted to like. He still wanted to like negotiate. And I told his ass like, until your friend shows up and makes this even, I'm gonna keep getting you and your friends nonstop. Yeah, and then. <laughs> Cause I don't know. I was just like bloodthirsty. I was like every single one. Now I know all you guys. I was like, all you guys, every single motherfucker here, I'm going to get every single one of you. I don't give a fuck because you're his friend. I'm going to fuck you up. If I see you on the streets, I don't care. Like, uh, I was (laughs) was like, I was kind of like, I was stupid back then. You know, like I just, I was like any way to hurt him, any way to make them feel like, um, regret or anything. Yeah. I never got a chance to, sit down with the with that guy yeah um or have a fight with him or anything he yeah. just ran away the the main guy the ex-boyfriend yeah. that's so fucking yeah. crazy man like, yeah and like- um yeah i mean that that's that was my last fight and then i mean i grew out of that like i i i don't care like i don't i forgive him like to me it's like we're kids we do stupid things it's crazy because it's like it, it goes back to that topic that we were talking about in an earlier podcast where it's not even really 
you could tell you could like unaffiliate yourself from a gang or whatever you're doing, but it's literally the people that keep you around that gets you into this bullshit. Yeah. Like that one girl yeah. who's who's still in her bullshit drags you into her problems. Yeah. And you don't you didn't expect that shit. You were just gonna help her out. Yeah, man. And and I heard that um like he would beat her and he was such a he was just a psychopath. Like he he's one of those guys that are like so um attached to their girlfriend that yeah. they that they're just an, an abusive, jealous, like they think everybody's trying to have sex with their girlfriend and shit like that, you know? Dude, some of those guys, I just want to talk to them like, dude, your girl's fucking ugly. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, I mean, she was she was pretty. She was a close friend of mine. Yeah. I would have dated her too, but, um, you know, it, what pissed me off the most was it was like, it was like, yeah, there could have been something there between us, but what really happened was- it was a good friendship. Yeah. And then like. Also, they weren't together. Yeah, because they just broke up. So it was fine. Yeah. I didn't know that. But I also didn't know what an abusive fuck he was. Yeah. I had no idea he was such a piece of shit. Like, and what a jealous fuck. Because like, usually when I find out a guy is extremely jealous. And um, this is, I think this is Stay very away. common in high school. Yeah. I mean, it. it's not like it doesn't happen to adults. But I think it's more common in high school that they get violent and um, they always want to fight people. Like I, to me, like when I find that out, like I'm just like, nah, I don't want you in dude, my pe- life. Man. People don't even grow out of that shit, dude. Yeah. I was at uh, when I was in K Town. <laughs> well, this is kind of funny, but I was in K Town. I was a. Uh, I used to go eat at this Denny. There's like one Denny's in K Town that everybody goes to, and I used to live in these apartments that were like walking distance from there. And I used to eat super late at night, but uh, every time I would go to Denny's, I used to get the same shit. I used to get this thing called the Midnight Slam Burger, which is like. Beef patty, hash brown eggs, bacon, and it's just fucking bomb ass burger. But uh, I, I used to go there starving just because, you know, it's late at night. You just go out drinking. And you want to go eat something. But I was so fucking hungry. I remember I was hungry and tired. And there was this, uh, a couple sitting across from us. And they got that sampler platter with the chicken tenders and everything else. <laughs> I just sat there just staring at it. And this dude looks at me. He goes, staring at my fucking girl, man. What's up? And I was like. Bro, I stared at you. I was still at those fucking chicken tenders, homie. I was like drooling, just looking at things. Dude, this dude, oh, I mean, automatically just for me looking over, he thinks I'm looking at his girl. What was his response? Huh? What was his response? No, that's what he said. He was oh. like, he's like, you staring at my homie girl? Uh, oh, my, my, my girl? Because like, usually comedians are so good with that shit yeah. that it catches people off guard. They don't even know what the well, fuck Oh, you saying. mean his response after yeah, I said, yeah, oh, yeah. he just started laughing. Oh, uh, yeah. so you <laughs> diffused it. Yeah. You started cracking up. I'm looking at her chicken tenders, man. I was like, that looks Bob, right? This was like, okay. And he starts cracking up. But, you know, her, she was just like, you yeah. Know? You know, You're I wasn't, embarrassing me. I wasn't even looking at her. I was literally looking at those, her, the fucking sample you platter. Disrespect to my girl. I know. I'm like, nobody's fucking looking. First of all, she wasn't even cute. See, I'm the opposite, dude. I like it when guys, like, look at my girl. <laughs> that's like, mine. Yeah, that's, you want you to wanna fuck her. I can't have her. <laughs> fucking horny bastard dude people get mad man like there's like dudes i like, remember in um in high school like specifically i know this guy he used to get <laughs> this one used to get mad at people dogging him but it wasn't even the fact that people are dogging him it's him staring at them uncomfortably so they're looking back at what the fuck he's looking at and he thinks he's like all these people are staring at me <laughs> yeah. is he on meth what the fuck <laughs> i know he's like <laughs> Step over there, man. He's fucking dogging me. I'm like, he's not dogging you. He's trying to figure out why the fuck you're staring at him, dude. Like, you're you're dogging him, dude. Yeah. Stop staring at people, dude. You fucking angry fuck. Did you used to be afraid, like, back in the day when a group of guys stared at you and you're like, oh, fuck, they're going to come fucking start shit with me. Yo, when I when we first started uh, YouTube, when I first started YouTube, like, I didn't realize how big the platform was. Yeah. And, you know, like, Sacramento, certain parts aren't, aren't really nice. Yeah. So... so uh, I was filling up my car like really late at night and these dudes, you know, you can tell when they're thugs or some shit, you yeah. know, fucking, they, they got the profile, right? So they're coming up and I'm, I'm pumping my car and I just see this car, these, these, this car full of dudes look at me and they kind of look, talk to each other and yeah. they circle around again. I'm like, oh shit, I'm about to get jacked. That's the first thing I thought. I'm like, You think fuck. they're going to jump out of the car and. I think they're going to jack my ass. You know, I'm like, fuck dude. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit. Like I'm not in the mood for this shit. So I'm getting nervous. I'm a little scared. You know, it's like a car full of dudes. What the fuck am I going to do? I have no weapons on me. You know, I'm like, okay, fuck. What am I going to do? Just fucking get this gas. So I pop the gas out. I put I'm like, the jet in my car. I go, hey, you that dude from YouTube? <laughs> Yo, man, you fucking funny, bro. I 
was like, oh shit, dude. I thought I was going to get jacked, man. My palms yeah. are sweating and shit. I mean, like, this, that's what people used to do back in the day. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, these fools are going to take my shit. They're going to fuck me up. But they just recognize me from YouTube. YouTube really changed the way I started seeing people. Yeah. Because I think we both, well, I mean, even if you're not gang related, I think if you hung out with lower income Asians yeah. in the late 90s or even 90s to like early 2000s, right? Everyone experienced some form of gang bangery. Yeah. Like either you got you knew friends jacked, like that. Yep. Or some gangsters were bored, so they wanted to punk you. Yeah. Or harass you. Or you you might just be on a date with a girl and they just want to beat you up. Yeah. Just for fun. You know, so people would just roll up on people for no fucking reason. Yeah, dude. or they're just drugged out and they think you're from a rival gang and like, you know, the way we all dressed kind of fit the profile yeah it was just the same fashion that was cool to wear was also the kind of clothes that could get you in trouble yeah but it it's like i'm not gonna dress like a straight geek yeah, yeah like yeah, i'm yeah, not yeah. gonna wear you know like i'm not gonna wear clothes that my mom wants me to wear yeah so like it was it was it was difficult because like the style and the fashion then would would attract that bad attention. Yeah. Like people drive up, be like, oh, these guys are bangers. For sure they're bangers. And yeah. then they'll want to start shit with you. Even if you're not, you know. So, because a lot of my friends that weren't involved in gangs, like they would get hit up. They, they just would get, the part. Yeah, they would get punked. And so, so like, I don't think people understand that. Um, and what kind of PTSD that would create. Because you're constantly paranoid. Dude. You have to second guess your life if you're going to go eat late at night. When we were, uh, when we first started YouTube too, I remember, well, my senses are down now, but whenever somebody, I would feel eyes on me, I'm like, oh shit, somebody's going to fuck me up. <laughs> yeah. Someone's going to come over here yeah. and start, <laughs> start fucking shit. bullying me. Yeah. Like, like they, they're going to, because you know, like they, a lot of guys would do this where like, they just want to fight for no reason. So yeah. they'll make something up. They'll come up to you be like, hey man, how come you said this to my friend? Yeah. You're like, I didn't say anything. Yeah. Like, but then if some of them, they're like these predators, right? Where they know that if you're easy prey and it can boost their ego and they can bully you, then they'll just, they'll, they'll really like go hard. Dude, they're like, yeah, you fucking disrespect me. And then if you back down, then, then they're like, oh, I know I could fuck this guy up because he's such an easy. So a lot prey. of the problems I used to get into, especially when I talk about a lot of the fights that I got in high school was specifically because like, number one, I always hung out with. So, you know, I, I think I hopped a lot of groups a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So there was definitely the, the set of friends that I had that I still have to this day that were really, really good people. And those are the people that I connected with the most. And eventually I started morphing into who they were just yeah. because, you know, I connected with them. I'm a, I'm not a bad dude. Yeah. And But there's also people that you grew up with that you just, you they're still your friends. Yeah. Even if they make poor choices and you still hang out with them. So that would always get me in fucking trouble. But the problem with that was that. I didn't really look the part of the guy that would hang out with these type of people, oh, right? Yeah. But and I wouldn't too. I mean, this, we're, we're childhood friends. Am I just gonna fucking lead them? Yeah. We, we grew up together. That's yeah. different shit, you know. But because of that, you know, with the glasses and the dweeby glasses, I was like a dweeby dude, and I'm also a big guy. Yeah. So I, I felt like people would try to target me out of that group when I hung out with them because I look like the nicest dude. Yeah. I'm the dweeby kid with the glasses. Yeah. And I'm also a big guy. So if they could beat up a big guy, yeah. then it makes them look their ego boost. It's an yeah. ego boost for them. But what they don't know is that number one, because I look like this, I had to defend myself constantly growing up yeah. all the fucking time. That's like a lot of my short friends. Yeah. Little friends. Yeah, you have to. They're it's, like some of the best fighters because <laughs> they had so many people picking on them. Yeah, so when I tell these stories, it's like, you just get in fights. It wasn't really, it's like I'm defending myself. Like, yeah. I'm not starting shit, but people would always start shit with me. And I had a, such a fucking short temper, yeah. you know, the K raid shit. So I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. And I just start swinging like a motherfucker. And also, and they I'm, don't expect it. They don't expect yeah. it because they expect to beat up the big guy in the group yeah. that looks like a dweeb so they can like check they it think off. You're the, soft. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, the big guy, I'm going to knock his ass out. Like, I remember in high school, there was this time, so there's this girl named, uh, so I, uh, I was friends with her since elementary school and she's like this sweet little Mormon girl. And so uh, I was kind of late to get lockers and she didn't have a locker partner. So we became locker partners and we're still friends to this day. So this is after school. We, we, in order for us to get a locker, you have to wait after school and go to the office. I and mean, the line's fucking huge. It's like during the summertime before school starting. So it was hot as fuck. And I remember I went to go put in this, this paper with her to get my locker. And I waited in the line for like two hours and this fucking dude comes up and he goes, yo, hold up real quick. And he like pushes me aside and he like knocks my paper out of my hand and he puts his shit in. And Why? I'm like, because he, he just cut in line. He tried to punk oh, me. Oh, yeah. 
And then, you know, Sarah, Sarah remembers, remembers me from elementary school. And even in elementary school, I had a really bad temper. And she's like, oh, shit. Yeah. And so I look at him. I'm like, hold on a second. And I grab his shit. I was like, this is shit. And he had his locker partner with him, too. I grabbed his shit and I fucking tore that shit. Oh, and I fucking fuck. threw it, And I threw it in his fucking face. Oh. I'm like, what's up? What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Because you know, I'm an easy target. I look like an easy yeah. target. I remember what I was wearing, too. I was wearing, like, these baby blue Jordan shorts, a fucking and one t-shirt, you know, whatever, whatnot, and, like, a baby blue cap. And this dude comes up. He did he, not expect that. Yeah. yeah. And I just look at him, and then she's, he's like, what? And I fucking... Boom, I push him against the yeah. fucking wall. I'm like, what's up? Right? <laughs> Everybody, you know, like in high school, when somebody's about to throw down the perfect they, circle. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, fight, fight, fight. fight. Yeah. <laughs> so this perfect circle forms. And you know, like in high school, I'm not, I'm not a like a thug or anything. Yeah. So it was very unexpected for people to see that in yeah. school. Cause I was so you they got a good re- reaction. Yeah, they're like, yeah. whoa, right? And so I'm sitting there and and I used to say this shit all, all the time. I'm like, swing at me and see what happens. And I'm like literally like an inch away from his face. I'm like, just fucking swing at me. And then, like, I'm literally about to clock this dude, and fucking Sarah <laughs> grabs my hand. Yeah. And she goes, just calm down. And I felt so bad because, you know, she's like this sweet little right. girl. And I remember I just, like, stared at him, and she's, like, holding my hand back. And I'm, like, looking like an inch and away from the, his face. And then what was the guy doing? Just shocked? He was just shocked. He was just yeah. quiet. Yeah. He didn't say shit. Yeah. Because he, he thought he could fuck with you. Yeah, he's not yeah. a small guy either. He was honestly, like, about a couple inches taller than me, too. Oh, yeah. So it's like, if he wanted to throw down, he could have thrown down. Yeah. And I'm, like, looking at the dude. I'm like, say something. I looked at his partner. I was like, why don't you do something then? Yeah. And so they just, like, they're like, fuck you. And they just walked off. And I was like, dude, I would You're that Korean liquor store owner. <laughs> <the ghetto. laughs> What's up, motherfucker? They're like, why is he talking like that? He looks like a really studious kid. Yeah. But that's the thing too, is because I think I, I chose to hang out with good people in high school. So and I and I like that about myself. Yeah. But because you know, I think like how I grew up, where I grew up, and the other guys that I grew up around with, they kind of taught me how to fight and not to be a little bitch. Yeah. So it transfers over. But what people don't know is that that violence was like survival for your. It's like self preservation. Yeah. Like, like you can't keep getting picked on. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. Your your ego's damaged. Your your sense of self is damaged. You get into depression, but you need, it was like, it was such a doggy dog time. It, it was so weird because like, I don't think people, under, I think like younger kids don't understand that. So when they hear these stories, they're like, oh, you're a gangster. That's not a gangster. I'm like the average kid. This is the average yeah, kid. That's true. Up. Gangsters were guys that were shooting each other. Exactly. And stabbing each other. And um, um, I mean, it still happens today. I'm not a part of that world and I'm not around it, but it was so prevalent that like everybody was being harassed. Yeah. Like, so much. It was so fucked up. It, it was it's such a weird time when I look back at it now and it's like, okay. And it's funny because anybody that I talk to within the same age range, um, no matter where you are in the world, I mean, in, in America, it was it was a rough time. Like, it was just, I hear the same stories, man. And I'm like, damn, that's so crazy. And I think by the time I was in college, high school was all like, a little bit different. It was like an emo era. I mean, they were still fighting and yeah, stuff, like but it was my, very different. That's when my thing was, it was starting to dissipate, right? Because yeah. we're, we're about three, four years apart. So yeah. in my time, it was already dissipating. It was like being academic was becoming cooler, Yeah. right? So there, I, I was just at that weird stage where those remnants were still there. But you also, what, grew up in Sacramento. And I think like yeah. places like Sacramento, Long Beach, Fresno, like, yeah. you know, like that, that gang culture like ghetto culture is still strong dude sacramento shit is still strong there man yeah. and like it's, it's kind of sad for me because i, I kind of want to see that shift happen yeah but i feel like sometimes sacramento in certain parts it's like digressing like they're yeah i mean it takes a lot because we live in a different world almost it's like we live in the same physical world right but like i didn't know there was this whole world outside of that yeah yeah I, and i wish i was introduced to that because when i wouldn't man when i when I go back to Sacramento now, so I stayed in the south part of Sacramento, South Sacramento. Like, in El- Elk Grove was a nice area too, because that's that's like I was kind of close to that area, so I would stay there. But South Sacramento was really bad, and that's all that I knew. I didn't know about downtown, midtown, like really like Natomas and Folsom. Yeah. Like, I know people who live there because they went to my church, but I never really went there. It wasn't a spot for me. I didn't feel like I belonged there. But there are so- like nice parts of Sacramento that seem like another universe mm-hmm. because it, I just. It wasn't something that I knew about. Yeah. You know, and my mind, my mind was this small. I was like, this is what Sacramento is. This is how everybody is here. Yeah. But there's actually people who have really good jobs, who have a lot of money, who yeah. who don't do this type of shit that I just never knew about people like mm-hmm. that, you know? So I was very ignorant. For sure. Yeah, I think it's I, I like the internet now because like a kid 
that isn't of that world. Like, like let, let's say if I was a kid in that time, and we did have online, but it wasn't like what it is today, where you can watch the life of others. You can watch people becoming successful from nothing. And like, you just heard stories, right? Yeah. But like, there's a way for nonviolent kids and whatever to have access to someone that they might be friends with. Yeah. Because I really got into hip hop, and I think that would have been a way for me to climb out of it earlier. Yeah. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's just the environment was such a shit place. And it didn't matter because I hopped from different high schools, like no matter where you went, you know, and um, no one was, I guess, safe from that kind of bullying. And, and it's also fighting. because it was it was the cool thing to do. It was glorified at the time. Yeah. Like it was so. Because now like, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I, I heard. I feel like um, if you're in a gang, um, not to say that people are in a gang, it's just, it's very niche. And if you are, you're ride or die as fuck now, you know? But yeah. now um, being a, I guess what I call is a dweeb, but you know, it's, it's not, not in a negative way, but liking nerdy things with, yeah. as it was considered back in the day. It's a cool thing. It's, it's okay to express yourself and like the things that you like and you find your community now, yeah. which it wasn't like that before. It's like you had to fit into a certain mold. And if you didn't, you're the dweeb or you were a cool person. You that had was, less options. Yeah. We even had less options for music. And I think if you were Asian back then, all you listened to was like trance, <laughs> R&B, yeah. hip hop. That's it. Yeah. And if you listen to alternative rock, you were fucking weirdo. You're trying yeah. to be white. If you listen to like oldies or whatever, it's like, I don't know, maybe you had Mexican friends who introduced you to it. Like the access to music, different lifestyles, all that, like there was no choices, man. Well, not much. If you grew up in a um like a minority dominant neighborhood. Yeah. Like yeah, I I, I it was different. It was really different. Cause I know Asian kids that grew up around like all whites yeah so for them they felt like they didn't have much choice but whatever their friends were listening to yeah yeah it was kind of cool because i just remember in, in high school i had a big shift where it was like my junior ish senior year i was just like man i don't give a fuck what anybody thinks anymore like just do whatever makes you happy so i joined choir <laughs> that's dope. i wish i did that man yeah like stuff like that like i remember like junior and senior were my happiest years yeah. because i was like you know what, what like you can't be on the fence about everything you know like you can't be this dweeby looking kid that wants to hang out with these thugs yeah and, and you you you're, you're almost sometimes ashamed to hang out with some of these people who are treating you great yeah because you're afraid of what this group is going to say about you it's like man, fuck this dude just join choir and enjoy yourself and it yeah. was like the most enjoyable senior year was like the most enjoyable for me because i literally did whatever i wanted and it made me happy yeah and those friends all those friends that i had then that majority of them fizzled out i maybe only talked to one or two of them and yeah. they don't do that shit anymore so i don't even know how good of friends they are like i i, I really don't know and i think i like the fact that um, I could be associated with this people and it, I felt like it made me feel cooler or something. Like you had their acceptance. I had their acceptance yeah. and it also I also kind of felt protected too. Like yeah. I felt like these dudes, no matter what, if something goes down, I can't hit up these guys. They're not going to defend me. Yeah. Some of them, I mean, mind you, some that of them- That was a big part of it for me. Yeah. Feeling protected. Feeling yeah. like a somebody. Yeah. Because I, I think people don't even realize too, like a lot of that gang shit happens from like fear. Like you get punked so much, eventually yeah. people will group up together and fuck you up. Yep. And then- Everybody in the group is revenge thirsty. And then like, it's like, oh, my homie got punked. Well, that brings back memories of when I was punked. Let's mm -hmm. go bully the bully. You know? Dude, dude, I remember some dudes that would be in that group that um, they were like, arguably, if they got into a one-on-one -on -one fight, they would get their fucking ass beat. Yeah. But because they knew they had all the homies around them, they would be the loudest fucking dude. Of course, because we're like, what? Most of us are 110 pound Asian guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had like one Samoan guy in the group or something, you know, yeah, that yeah. could do everything that, for us. I was the Samoan guy. <laughs> I was the big fucking guy in the group, you know? Yeah. It was such a weird time, man. Like I look back at it now and it's just like, damn, dude, there's so much bullshit to think about. I think like kids now, even though we had that, I think sometimes kids have it worse now because yeah. of Instagram. Like yeah. I hear like kids, they base school popularity on who has the most Instagram followers. Really? Yeah, man. Damn. They're like, oh, how many followers do you have? That's like how much, that's what they ask. Like, oh, you got this Damn. amount of followers. And if they have a lot of followers, they try to fuck with them more because they want to gain their clout. Right. So that's the new high school dynamic. Well, now. it makes sense because they see all these YouTubers and Instagram models and everybody like living life, living yeah. large. I didn't even know, like before Instagram, I didn't know like what kind of wealth and things were out there in the world. 
Yeah. Like yacht party. What the fuck? Yacht party. <laughs> yeah. I only remember like that Biggie Smalls shit, like when him and Puff was on the yacht. Like, and I was yeah. like, wow. But how prevalent it is now, like, it seems like everybody's doing it but you. Yeah. But back then it was like, oh, it's only the rich and the special rappers that are doing it. People, people now, they just because they want to front like they have everything on Instagram yeah because you know you, they see a dude with the yacht they have a yacht party right yeah like prior to that to our thoughts it was like oh there's one individual that's getting this yacht and he's inviting all these people out but people want to imitate that lifestyle so much I know kids now they I don't know kids but I know kids do this like they'll get all their friends they'll, they'll just pull all this money together just so they could get get that yacht party or something Damn. just so they could look like they stunt yeah you know and it's it's, it's just it's like an airbnb yacht <laughs> <laughs> that's really what it is so they'll rent out a yacht or whatever yeah. an airbnb and they'll yeah. stunt like yo i'm balling i'm rich or whatever but it's like dude you and 30 people rented that place out not to say that's wrong but you're acting like you didn't do that it's yeah. like what's the whole point of this man you're broke it's cool i know but i think the whole point of it is getting laid <laughs> yeah that makes sense yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it probably it probably worked too, right? I if I was seventeen, I'd do the same shit. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd be pretty. I'd be pretty fucked up if it was for. I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe if I look back on it now, if yeah. I was if I was on Instagram, I feel like I would have been that high school kid that was super against Instagram, and I just would have got punk for it. <laughs> I think I think like we had our own set of problems, which was like survival and violence and yeah. kids, you know, our friends getting shot or going to jail. That was our world. I mean, there was probably so many other things going on at the time, but for sure, it was a much more crazier thing. Like, I remember, like, even outside of the ghetto group, like, like the whites were going through their own set of problems with, like, drug abuse and overdose and dying. And, like, um, it was just, I think, overall, a more hardcore, like, life or death type of time. Yeah. And I think now... It's more about mental health and a lot of people committing suicide or like, like it's, it's not like in your face survival and violence, maybe in some areas, but it seems like the problems that they're dealing with is more like you're too damn young to be seeing the world so damn fast. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's, that's everybody, right? Like that's what they thought of our generation and the mm. generation before. I don't think they're wrong either. I yeah. think like we just have a different set of problems is yeah. what it is. They might not have somebody um, pointing guns at them or, or yelling at them, but they'll have- I think I'd rather have that. They'll have this feeling <laughs> of, um, you know, like I'm not good enough and, and, and constant depression. There's, and just, like, there's just too many things to compare yourself to now. Yeah. It's like, and there's actual metrics to it now. Yeah. That's the sad part. It's like, you know, there's, there's, there's even like a certain level of cool that's like, it's subjective. You know, it, there's no number to it. There's no, no digital dial that you could see like, oh, this is the cool person. Rank it up. You see that number? That means how important that they are. Yeah. And I, you know, because even Tiff said like, she's not going to have Isaac look at, uh, have a phone yet because of those yeah. reasons because mentally he's not ready for it yeah and i 100 percent agree i think so too i i 100 percent fucking agree she man. should fucking take him to the stone age yeah <laughs> <laughs> give him an abacus you need a calculator take that have a pager i wonder too with like isaac like i i, I feel like sometimes like he's probably already like the popular kid because yeah he has clout yeah yeah but he doesn't have you know the stuff to show it but you know it's still out there I mean, what you going to do? I mean, there's celebrity kids. There's like shit always, you know. I, I, yeah. I, I thought about it too where I was thinking like, you know, when, when Mary and I have a kid, um, I don't know if I want to put his face out, his or her face out there. You're not trying to make money? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll, uh, I think, <laughs> you know, I'm not even fucking lying. I'm like, that's a very poor business move, David. You know, but I think I get scared where... um. I feel like I'm kind of setting. Well, it's different. You know, I think some parents can handle it very well. I yeah. don't know if I can handle it very well as a parent, you know, where I, I think like I, I see this kid being a fucking loser because of it. You know, like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm special. You know, I don't want my kid. I'll tell them they're unspecial every time on, <laughs> on video. Just know you're cute as fuck. You're gonna, but that's all you got going for you. When your kid gets older, <laughs> you're going to just troll your kid like you ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> just write all this stuff just so he knows. I think no matter what you can't avoid problems they're just yeah. gonna have their own set of problems i get scared though yeah like, I, I, i'm more scared about how i'm gonna handle it like i don't, I, don't, I can barely handle my own problems. that's true 
you know like i, I just hope i'm not violent i hope so too yeah. man because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree right like yeah. we got our we got fucked up yeah and i know like when i'm set off i got anger problems and like um you know i just hope that i can control myself and i break that cycle yeah and i change the way i handle shit because like I, I probably might not like beat them but i might like verbally abuse them or i might yell at them too much like a form of it yeah, so it might be some form of abuse. Like, I don't want to do that. And that's what scares the fuck out of me, man. Do we talk about stories sometimes where I think, like, if I tell you about the story where I got my ass beat, it's funny to us. Yeah. But you tell somebody who's never seen violence as a kid. They're mortified. Dude, yeah. like, I told this story to my friend the other day. Yeah. About this time where my dad chucked a fucking office chair at my head. Yeah. And I'm cracking up. And she's looking at me like, yo, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, that's not funny to you. They're like, you need to see a therapist. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's funny. How do you think we got a sense of humor? <laughs> this is this is a coping mechanism. This yeah. isn't, I'm not trying to be an entertainer. Yeah. This is for, this is to keep my fucking sanity, dude. This is therapy, you sons of bitches. Yeah. Yo, I look back at it. I'm like, yo, I guess that's not really funny. You know, but to me, for some reason, it cracks me up. Nah, man. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. I think, I think emotions are funny. Irrational yeah. Actions are funny. Yeah. But it's like, what are you going to do? You can't change your, the past. Yeah. You just got to change the way you look at it. That's so fucking interesting. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's about an hour. Hour in. Cool. We're knocking them out, killing out. Yo, so I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, that podcast. We actually had a specific topic, but we Maybe fucking... we'll do it for the next one. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it yeah. for the fucking next one. <laughs> this one's not... It, it was really good, though. Yeah, Damn. dude. <laughs> I don't think I told that full story before. I don't think you ever did. Yeah. Dude, that... Fucking peacemakers, Bart, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? You know why that cracks me up? Because that's still something Bart would do till this day. I know, right? <laughs> the man has not changed he's at all. He's justifying his violence. <laughs> it's so funny, and he's righteous about it. So, like, back then, though, I was like, that is so fucking cool, Bart. That is, that, I, that's so next level. And he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> that's literally him, dude. <laughs> fucking tight hey yo so you can check out genius brain on uh spotify podcast itunes remember all those other audio platforms if you're if you see us on itunes give us that five star and remember every thursday um is gonna be with joe uh sundays we have a, a, another random guest so thursday and joe is is our slot together sundays we have a uh, a rotating guest and stuff like that. Genius Brain will be moving to a different location soon, but we're still popping out these podcasts. Make sure you check us out. Uh, sooner or later, we're going to be dropping merch and we might even start a Patreon later on. You don't even know what's up, but it's going to be popping as hell. It's going to be dope. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Till next time. Goodbye. Peace.